Hello, welcome to Target USMLE. Today I will be sharing with you 10 tips to pass Step 2 CS the first time. Before we go on to the tips, I'd like to give a small, short introduction to all the beginners to Step 2 CS. As most of you know, uh, the exam is an 8 hour long exam and you are given 12 SPs or simulated patient. Each of them have to be examined in 15 minutes and then you have to write a patient note for each of this patient uh, in 10 minutes. So you'll be given five cases, then a short break, then four cases, another break, and then three cases. So for each encounter is 15 minutes and then patient notes 10 minutes. Also, for passing the Step 2 CS, you need to pass all three components mentioned here. Number one is the integrated clinical encounter, which is data gathering and patient notes. Number two is the communication and interpersonal skills. Now, ICE just tests whether you can ask a bunch of questions, whether you can record them and effectively transfer them to patient notes. Whereas communication and interpersonal skills is building a rapport with the patient, maintaining eye contact, having a professional mannerism, then understanding what the patient, not just asking questions, but um, listening to the patient and changing your questioning or line of question along, um, along the new information that you have received. Okay? And also, communication uh, is important in transferring the information of what you think about the diagnosis, of how you're going to manage the patient. So all this gets judged in communication and interpersonal skills. Of course, spoken English proficiency is also graded. So you have to pass ICE, CIS, and SEP for this exam. Even if you fail in one component, then you fail this exam and have to retake it. So regarding the timing, as I told you before, it's a 15-minute encounter and a 10-minute patient notes writing session. So from the time the voice um, announces, examinees, you may now enter the room, to this encounter is now finished. You have 15 minutes and the only warning that's given is 5 minutes before the end of the encounter, which says, examinees, you have 5 minutes left for this encounter. When you write patient notes for 10 minutes, the only warning that you're given is at around 2 minutes before the finish line when, you, when it announces you have 2 minutes left. So it's sort of uh, an indication that you have to wind things up and get ready to finish the encounter or the patient notes. Let's go on to the tips. Number one, like I say, you have to be really smart with time management in this exam. I always tell my students, uh, given the time, anybody can pass CS. It's in this short 15 minutes, they are putting you under stress and they want to know if you can manage the patient effectively within that short time interval. Okay, Ask history effectively, do a short physical examination, very focused and then tell your line of um, uh, thinking and management to the patient all under 15 minutes. So roughly I would divide this 15 minutes into 4, 4, 4 and 3 minutes. So for the first 4 minutes is for history of present illness. Okay. Next 4 is for Pam Hugs Foss and the next 4 minutes is for physical examination which includes a short general examination and 3 minutes for closure. It doesn't strictly have to be uh, in this mode, but it's easier to remember 4, 4, 4 and then 3. I sort of ask my students to have an internal clock of 4 minutes because you're not going to be looking at the clock in the room. You have to have a sense of what 4 minutes is and then if you pass that limit, uh, then you'll have to know you have to wind down and move on to the next section. Here specifically, I'd like you to note that I've written outside the door spending about 45 seconds to one minute because I think that is very crucial to organize yourself before you enter the door. And you also see the 10 kickstarters for the CS Robo which I'll be mentioning in the following slides. Of course, once you finish the encounter, you have 10 minutes for the patient notes. Number two, what do you think is the most important or vital minute of the 15-minute encounter? 
I think the minute that you spend outside the door is very critical to how you're going to act and hold yourself together inside the room. Because once you're inside, you're in front of a stranger, there is the stress of the exam, you're tensed, your mind is thinking about all the questions that you have to ask, do you even have a good diagnosis to ask the right set of questions? So you want to sort of have a game plan outside the door, organizing your blue sheet, which I call the blue sheet blueprint, before you even knock on the door. Okay, this is very crucial. Number three, I was mentioning about the 10 Kickstarters for the CS Robo. Now there are 10 things that you have to say or when you start the encounter and uh, pretty much these 10 things just have to roll out of your mouth uh, because you shouldn't be even thinking about uttering these things except that you have to change the name of the patient in every encounter. So before anything, before you even knock on the door, I would take a deep breath and relax myself and then put on that big smile of yours and then knock knock. You enter smiling and say, hello Miss Kent, I'm Dr. Um, so and so, I'm the resident physician on call today. And you're shaking hands and looking directly into the eye of the patient and asking, how can I help you? And when she says her chief complaint, maybe abdominal pain or belly pain, you say, I'm so sorry to hear that, with genuine empathy, not like acting, but with genuine empathy. And then uh, ask her if she's comfortable or he's comfortable in the room, and then sit down. Uh, while sitting down, ask, do you mind if I sit down and take a few notes while we talk? And then you ask the open-ended question, how can I help you or tell me more about your pain? All right, number four, know when to stop. Now you can keep on asking all the questions under the sky or all the list of questions that you have for a particular case from first aid or from USMLE world or the list of questions that you've made up from medical school, but you really don't have that kind of time in those real exams. So you have to ask very focused questions and hopefully you are asking some of the questions which are there on the patient's list of questions because they have a diagnosis for that case and they want you sort of to be at least in the ballpark and so the SP would be ticking all the relevant questions that you're asking of course you don't get any negative points but you want to be at least in the ballpark of the diagnosis for example, uh, you also have to ask about uh, other systems other than the uh, system at hand. For example, you have to ask, uh, say in an abdomen case, you have to ask few questions about the cardiovascular, respiratory and other systems because if you don't ask in data gathering, then you're not going to write under the review of systems in patient notes. So you're losing marks both in the data gathering as well as in the patient notes. So you don't want to do that. And when you kind of come close to the four minute internal clock, you want to tell yourself, okay, it's time to stop and then move on to Pam Hugs Plus. So only a relevant and focused history is all they ask. Number five, Pam Hugs Plus. Practice till you are so fluent because Remember, Pam Hugs Plus is past history, allergies, medication, the whole list that's listed here. Um, it's the same for all 12 cases so you might as well practice and be so fluent with it that you have it all under four minutes the answers might be different the past history the family history might be different in all the cases but the questions that you have to ask is the same so why not have it under your belt before you go for the exam all right number six do a general examination. Many students I've coached, I've seen that they don't do a general examination, go straight to the systemic examination. There are several important clues that you might get, might get in general examination for maybe some purpuric spots, some rash, maybe dry skin, maybe pedal edema. Uh, sometimes there are no clues as to what this case is in history and general examination might offer you the clue. So do a very quick general examination. Here again, uh, general examination is the same for all patients. So the patient is now thinking, okay, this doctor was good in history. Now how is she going to handle me when she's going to examine me? And this is a good chance for you to prove that you're good at your skill. 
So while you're doing your general examination, your mind is also thinking, what next? What system that I have to examine next? So it gives you a quick 30 second interval to think about the next step. All right, number seven, physical examination. Now you have four minutes to do a, a focused physical examination on the relevant system at hand and of course you have to do uh, associated symptoms and associated systems that you have to examine like maybe a cardiovascular system or respiratory system for example in a musculoskeletal system you probably have to look for distal uh, neurovascular deficit okay now unless you think about this you're not going to do it in the real exam so inform the patient as you're doing a physical examination tell her what you're doing before you do it and then please use please and thank you maintain eye contact and that's very very important so this kind of give builds the rapport between you and the patient number eight I can't stress enough about closure please don't leave the examination room without closing your case because closure as I said the six points in closure where you summarize you counsel you answer to challenging questions you tell what you think about the diagnosis what you're thinking and what uh, investigations that you're planning to do now this is what every patient in America would expect you would think they don't want to know if you're very good in your English proficiency but they want to know how are you going to treat me what is your next plan of action so you the examiners are testing you on this and you better be good at closure so you can cut chart on physical examination even uh, if you have to uh, if you don't have time but uh, finish the closure Number nine, you all know this, you have to practice, practice, practice for this exam because practice brings fluency, it brings you um, the ability to to handle the show perfectly on the real exam. Uh, many students fail because they haven't practiced well enough. So even if you learn from any source, make sure you practice both not only on Skype and over the phone, but in person because say washing the hands, you know, please excuse me while I wash my hands. That hardly takes a few seconds. But in reality, going and washing your hands takes at least 30 seconds, I would think. So practice live before you go for the exam too. Of course, you, um, it's not always possible to do it live, but uh, try doing it at least a couple of times before you go for the real exam. Number 10, this is important, believe in yourself, because if you don't, then who else will? So I'm sure these tips are going to help you. And um, some final words that I like to share is, you have to remember the SPs are the ones who are acting. You are not acting, you're a real doctor. So just be yourself and just chill, and I'm sure you can do it. So good luck. Do it once and then do it right. Wishing you all the very best from Target US Emily. If you do need any help, please do email us or you can meet me on Skype. Uh, my Skype ID is MJJune1. All the very best. Bye bye.